What's up YouTube, it's the Big Kahuna back again with another video. And i like to give a shout out to Kenny Thomas, 1983, and Flip Money R, and on to today's video. So, if anybody hasn't gotten a console yet, who's on the fence about which console they're going to get, or they're getting both consoles, or whatever, do yourself a favor, get the insurance on it. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, real quick. The, the people who are like older than me. Or younger than me. Or about the same age as I am. You've all known that when you grew up with the Genesis. Nintendo. Um, all those systems and things like that. You uh, pretty much. If you had one of those systems. You didn't pretty. You didn't worry about it breaking down. You didn't worry about coming home and turning it on, and all of a sudden there was some lights flashing and it wasn't coming on. You wasn't worried about that. The only thing you worried about was, depending on who you was. And for the record, I never owned a Nintendo. You either worried about blowing your cartridge out, or the occasional screen freezing, and then you'd have to turn it off, turn it back on. Even though that still happens all the way up till today. So now that that's all out the way. Basically what I'm saying is what you always hear us older people say. That back in our days things were built to last. And they were. But it seems like nowadays things aren't really built to last. And not only are they not built to last. But what is it with everything in 30 seconds? If your PlayStation 4 is not working correctly, unplug it for 30 seconds. If your XB1 is not working correctly, unplug it for 30 seconds. If your TV, something happens to your flat panel TV, unplug it for 30 seconds. Cable box, unplug it for 30 seconds. Wireless router, unplug it for 30 seconds. Did someone sit in a big room and say, look, uh, not only are we just going to make shitty products that don't work all the time, but let's make it a mandatory 30 seconds for everything. Did somebody sit around and do that? I, I'm just wondering. Somebody hit me up and let me know. But anyway, so I'm going to tell you this little story. And for the ponies that may be watching, um, don't get too happy. And don't post the video anywhere. Because if you do, make sure you watch to the end of the video. Because I know some of you will get happy and be like, I said, I told you, I told you, that shit box. But anyway, so this is what happened. Like a couple weeks ago, my cable was off. And we was um, upgrading to Fios because we had Com Crash. And I was just tired of dealing with the fact that they would have to come out here all the time to fix the cable or... Our internet was just slow as hell. As much as they want to tell you that their shit is fast, it's at least here it's not fast. And I just got files, and it's way faster. Their uh, upload speed was faster than Comcast's download speed. That shows you how fast it was, and it's cheaper. And I'm paying you know less money. So anyway, and I know people come in and talk about there's this and that and all. I don't care about all. But anyway, my internet is faster. So, we didn't have cable and we didn't have internet. But I have a load of Blu-rays and DVDs. So, I started trying to watch those on my XP one And I was having problems with it, of course. Um, you know, put the DVD in there or the Blu-ray. And after about so many minutes, it would just pop up with a message try putting a disc in, a Blu-ray disc, or this disc, or that, and there's something in there. So, you, you know, eject it, put it back in, eject it, put it back in, eject it, put it back in, and then finally, maybe on the 10th time, or the 20th time, it'll start working. So, we was doing that all the way up until we got cable again. So, what happened was, I took out one of my X-Men movies. And I said, let me watch this because I haven't seen this in a while. I think it was like X-Men 3 or something like that. Of course, I know it wasn't called 3, but it was the third X-Men. So I put it in there. And of course, it didn't, it, you know, said 
a little message, put a disc in, blah, blah, blah. So I ejected it, came out. I put it back in, same thing, ejected it, put it back in, hit the button, brrrr, nothing. It wouldn't come out. Now, mind you, I did call Microsoft, and they did say, you have two ways that you can send this back to us. We can put a $400 hold onto your credit card, and we'll just send you an uh, a XP1, and then you'll just send us the damaged one back to us, which was cool. But I don't have a credit card like that. So... I said, what's the other option? The other option is they send you some type of code. You take it to FedEx. They know what the order is or whatever. And then you put it in a box. And you pay to ship it to them. Now, right there, I was like, I'm going to pay to ship something that doesn't work to you. And it's your fault. And you, it's under warranty. And you should be fixing it. So, I was upset about that. But I had put $50 on it the day I got it of launch because of the whole 360 and PlayStation 3 fiasco. Now, granted, PlayStation was one system that went up. And for the X, the 360, it was eight systems that went up. And I wasn't going through that again. So I paid the extra $50 even though I didn't want to. But it worked out because... Um, I thought about it, and I said, you know what? They also said it would take four to six weeks for it to come back if I sent it to them. And I was like, forget that. So I thought about it, and I said, shit, I put $50 that I'm not using on this thing through GameStop. So I'm just going to take it to GameStop and get another one right now. So, of course, they said put everything that you got that was in the box in the box. And I said, well, I'm not putting my day one controller in there. So I already had a plane controller. They said, that's fine. You can use that. So I did that. Got another XB1 just in time for my cable and all that other stuff. So for all the fanboys out there who are going, yeah, that's what happens to the shit, shit box. This is what I want to also show you. Because you all know that I had a PlayStation 4. But what you didn't know is that was my second PlayStation 4. Now, the PlayStation 4 I sold back to GameStop was going up. I also posted that video, but of course, since it had video of TV on it, it was blocked because I was showing people I was going from the PlayStation 4 to the XB1, and the XB1 was working fine, but the PlayStation 4 was really, really screwed up. So, for those ponies that come in here and get all happy, this was my my only XB1 that was going up. But for PlayStation, it was my second one. And here is the proof right here. As you can see, PlayStation 4, they sent me this box right here. And the little label and everything. And then you put it in the box. I still have it. Because... I didn't send it. I just took that and sold it back to GameStop. Even though I didn't do it because I did it for the reason I said I did it for. Because it was just no games that I liked on the system. And it was just sitting there collecting dust. So that's why I sold it. But I'm pretty sure somebody somewhere sitting back probably already had to turn that thing in after it starts messing up or whatever. It's one of those things where you have a, a piece of equipment that's messing up. And then when you ask the repairman to come to your house to fix it, then it's no longer doing what you know it was doing before. So that's exactly what it was doing. But anyway, so the moral of the story is make sure you get some insurance on these systems. Because nowadays, I don't know what the hell they're doing. But um, these systems are not very well put together. The only company that really puts systems together pretty decent and you don't really have to worry too much about is Nintendo but as I always say fanboys don't love their favorite system they just hate yours peace